Retirement planning is the most important aspect when it comes to financial planning. Retirement planning for seniors is even that much more important. Why? Because they have very little room for error. When somebody's in their 20s, their 30s, and they're saying, okay, you know, way in the future, I'm going to be retiring about maybe 15 years out, 20 years out, 30 years out into the future, I'll start worrying about really preserving my money and making sure that I'm having a solid plan. When somebody fast forwards and now they're maybe in their 50s, their late 50s, early 60s, early 70s, whatever that is. Now they're saying, you know what? I worked my ass off. I want to now retire. I want to essentially ride out into the sunset. How can I make sure that I'm accumulating my assets properly, that I'm creating the proper strategies towards a successful retirement, towards never having to go back to work, towards relying on all the different assets that I've already accumulated to create the proper strategy so that I have peace of mind, that I just get to go wake up every morning, maybe that's go for a walk, maybe that's work out, maybe that's visit the grandkids, maybe that's you know uh, go on a vacation, whatever that case might be, whatever is ideally what you see as your ideal retirement stage or your, your ideal retirement lifestyle, how can you make sure that you're accomplishing that? The easy technique regarding retirement planning, especially when you're in that latter stage, is gonna be correlating to the three things scenario. There's three things that every individual needs to figure out before they're retired, if they're currently retired, how to stay retired forever. The first step is going to be income. Making sure that the income that is coming to you when you stop working is gonna be greater than or equal to your expenses. If you're doing an expense analysis and you say, okay, I'm in my 60s and I wanna retire in the next five years as an example. These are my current monthly expenses for both me and my spouse. When I hit my ideal retirement date at age 65, as an example, I, I know that I have to at least have X amount of dollars coming to me every single month to the day I pass. So in order to accomplish what that expense might be, you have to look underneath the hood and say, okay, well, what's, what's available to you? Do you have social security income? If so, how much is that social security income? Do you have pension income? Are you fortunate enough to have a pension plan? If so, what is that dollar amount that's going to be coming to you? Because those two income sources could come to you on a lifetime income basis and you don't have to keep working. You don't have to say, okay, I'm going to be still going into work early every day and I have to work for these next 10, 20 years. You're already at that point. You're already, you're already at the finish line. So that's when you would look at your assets, your existing assets that you've accumulated, your 401k monies, your IRA monies, your Roth IRA monies, your savings checking account, and think of them in the terms of buckets of how can I drain these buckets and make sure that I'm not draining that well dry before I ultimately hit date of death. So if there is a specific gap between your social security and pension income versus what your expenses are, you have to create a strategy to close that gap. That might be leveraging different tools to utilize rollovers, rolling over your 401k or your 403b and to customize IRAs and allowing those IRAs to produce the type of income stream that will close that gap making sure that the income stream is going to be going to both you and your spouse to the day that you guys pass away. Now, whatever you don't use for that step one, or if you're using the smallest amount of dollars or only as much as necessary for that step one, that leaves as much money as possible for your step two, which is emergency need, and your step three growth-related need as, as, as the most plentiful amount. So if somebody has certain expenses, and, and rule of thumb for the emergency need is going to be anywhere between six to 12 months of whatever their expenses are, they should at least leave it into some sort of emergency fund, some sort of, oh my gosh account, oh my gosh monies in case of an oh my gosh occur, uh, moment occurs. You could pull these monies from, it'll be completely liquid, and you don't have to have it susceptible towards growth or towards downward market risk. So that might mean placing your monies in that savings or checking account or leaving a portion of dollars in your savings or checking account. If let's say you, you want to create an IRA that, that does that, then you would create an IRA with potentially money market account just leaving it in a non-invested position so you could take the monies out whenever you need. And then that step three is trying to maximize any sort of growth. So if you've already accomplished your step one income need, your step two emergency related need, step three would be how do I make sure with all my remaining assets that they're working in tandem with one another, they're working to beat out the pace of inflation, they're working to accomplish my tertiary goals, such as leaving inheritance maximization or making sure if maybe one spouse passes away that the other spouse has enough income streams that are coming to him or her at that point of death from the first spouse. 
So there's a whole multitude of different things. Maybe it's a, it's a tax efficiency standpoint that you want to do Roth conversions so that the amount of monies that are sitting in that step three growth bucket, they're growing on tax free basis through Roth IRA accounts. So there's once again, there's a multitude of different ways on how to skin that cat. Really making sure that you're accomplishing your three thing scenario can be the difference between having to go back to work when you're in your 70s, when you're in your 80s, because you basically well, you ran your well dry versus having that retirement confidence, knowing that I hit my specific age, I, sp I hit my specific retirement age, what I saw as my ideal retirement date, and now I could live with confidence. I have my income is covered, my emergency need is covered, and I have the cherry on top, my growth related accounts. Those are now all working. Maybe it might be being extremely aggressive when it comes to your growth related strategies or kind of having a combination of a fixed account and an aggressive account or a fixed account, a fixed index account and an aggressive account. It really depends on what your risk tolerance is. If you're more risk tolerant, you could take on more risk. If you're more risk averse, then obviously you should be taking on less risk. If you found value in this video, feel free to give our 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002, reference this video, and we can make sure to have the correct advisor contact you based on what your schedule is. Individuals come to us all throughout the country because of our trademark strategies that no other advisory groups have access to, and then also our educational content. Whenever we deal with a client, we want them confident knowing where they are right now, what are some of the good things and what are some of the bad things? What are some little holes or mistakes that they could essentially pad up? Uh, also, where are they trying to get to? Where, how long is their time horizon? If they're leveraging their current accounts right now and they're on their current trajectory, can they get to that point B successfully? And then ultimately, when they do hit their ideal retirement date, how to get from the ideal retirement date until the date of death, as morbid as it might sound. Meaning that how do you make sure that you're not draining your well dry? how to make sure that you're trying to accumulate as many dollars, as many leftover dollars, and have as much fun in retirement so you can really live, live the destination that you've always dreamt of to get to that stage. If you did find value in this video, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, RetireSharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. Mm -hmm.